Now I'm working with the project I've worked in a previ previous video where we've set up some staging cameras for this scene. Um, so I'm just going to expand this to be 0 to 250. Um, and I have several cameras in here. Now when I'm working on a scene, I quite often scale cameras up so I can actually see them within my scene. So if I select camera one here, and I focus on that, you can see that I've, I've made it quite large. Now one thing I need to do with this is I need to make sure the scale of that is back to its original scale. So if I rewind that to where my keyframe is, I've set a keyframe on that to hold it in position, I just need to set that up here and if I set key on those as well, uh, then that would work as a uh, camera in a camera sequence. Now there'll be some others that I need to change. Uh, for example, the one that is tracked inside the car actually probably won't run the same way anyway. But I'm going to carry on and we'll look at that error when it comes up. Um, but we do need to make sure all the cameras are at a single scale, so a scale of one. I've made camera sequencer come up, so that was Windows Animations camera sequencer, and this is where I can add cameras to my scene. So if I add a shot now, so I'm just going to say shot perspective. Now I want that to be my camera one. Um, camera one's here. Ah, actually, I can see in there that my uh, I only keyed one of the attributes. So I just set a key on each of these because it jumped back to its original key point. Yeah, key one. Uh, if I want to change this, I can click on that and I'm in the attribute editor now and I can change that for camera one. I so say the first part of this I can see will run on camera one. I want that to be longer. So I can look at these trimming icons here, so you can split the shots, or you can ripple edit, uh, remove shot gaps, remove overlaps, um, track height, move shot left and right, toggle whether gaps should be skipped. Um, so one thing we can do, we can just pick this up and move it. So I can move that here. Uh, what you can see though is that it's changing the percentage. So it's still only using frames 1 to 24 in there. So it's actually going to run at slow motion. So I actually want that to run to 65 as the other thing does. Um, at 100. So it's quite important to get that to move in the right way. If you use this create shot or frame all, you'll just be working in the, the timeline there. Um, if I play through now, I can see where that shot will go. Again, I have to have the full length within this time here. And I can get to the spot where I want that to change. So it's stopping at the end of that sequence there. Um, and so I'll go to the next end here. And I can create a new shot. So this time I am going to tell it exactly what to do. So I want camera two starting at uh, 65, ending at uh, 120, and create shot. So here we've got the, um, we can remove overlaps remove shot overlaps. Uh, if we highlight both of them, remove shot overlaps, we'll trim that down to make that fit. Also if I frame all, I can see how that works. So that's from 65. So I actually want that to run uh, 66 to 121. And then that will be the same as the other shot. So that needs to go back slightly um, and that will cut from one shot to the other as it goes through. Um, so you can see how you make can build a sequence here and 
just going to add one into the, the middle here. If I want to trim part of this so that I can add in a different shot, I can say trim to the end, so after the current time. And I might want to have that more start a little bit later as well. And this is where I'm probably going to get some issues in that the camera I'm going to use in this middle section is camera 4 and that's already nested inside this car. So this is the lead car that we keyframed and it's got camera 4 in there. Now its scale itself is 20 but the, uh, the car, its parent, has been scaled as well. So again I would look at this again and if I was uh, designing this to animate in a, a sequence like this, it's probably worth using NURB circles and adding the cars into those, as we did with these. Um, because the NURB circle, you don't need to scale, or if you have scaled, you can freeze the transformation to make that um, zero. Um, so with that one, we've got keyframes on it, but we could have frozen that transformation. Um, but I'll just demonstrate why this doesn't work. So create shot, uh, I'll just put that in there, and just take it out from after that spot. So delete after, and give back another frame, delete after, so that's a neat edit in there. Right, the camera I want is camera four, so it's currently camera two, change that over to camera four, and I can see the shot that's in there. Now to finalize this procedure, we can make an Ubercam. An Ubercam is what will allow us to render just using a single camera. So we don't have to work out which shot is which. Um, and we don't have to tell it which frames to do. But here we go. I've made create Uber camera and it says error line one, cannot create Ubercam, transfer on camera transform of camera 4 has been scaled. So this is actually a double problem, but I'll, I'll go into camera 4 and I'll scale that back to 1, 1, 1 and I think we'll see a slightly different issue this time. So if I say create Ubercam so cannot create Ubercam, parent of camera 4 has a non-default transform. So this car has a scale of 0 0.05 Therefore, it can't actually run. It can't actually make this Uber camera for me. So if I just go forward to the spot where that starts, what I'm going to do is actually unparent that from that. And that's using the middle mouse button. I can just bring that out into there. I think you can unparent by pressing Shift P as well. But that has brought that camera out of that parent relationship. Um, and But it's in a position that that will work with. So... Uh, that camera then has taken on that scale of the parent so I'm just going to change that back to 1 and now I can create Ubercam camera 2 has been scaled as well so I just have to check camera 2 uh, camera 2 group there so it's just each of them all have to be 1 and then do a save as move the cam and so now create Ubercam and that's actually had a result. Well, didn't say anything, didn't have any errors. But I can see here I do have an Ubercam now. And I can look at that through this window. Uh, if I get rid of the camera sequencer, that would just uh, play in here uh, frame 0 to 180 220 so the uber cam will play those shots and the advantage here is that when I do a play blast I can right click in here do a play blast and I select the options here save to file use render settings a scale one Okay, so I'm just going to change this to Ubercam. And if I play blast that, that will create 
an animation based on the edit I've got there. So I can now go on, go on to render that camera, that Ubercam, and I won't be rendering extra frames that I might need. So, and that's the edit that I've, I'm working with. So that gives me the rough cut here, um, and it's a matter of going back and setting that up for a render. Now once I've seen the play blast, I will want to change the render settings so that I can render the whole piece. Now at the moment I'm using Maya software. Often you'll have um, Arnold render as a default uh, render setting. So I'm just going to start with Maya software and then we'll have a look at Arnold render. They both have slightly different uh, looks. Um, now what I've done in here, I've changed this one so it's name.hash extension rather than single frame and that allows me to say which frame is the start and which frame is the end so once I've done that I've got 1 to 120 frames I can tell it which camera to use I'm using the uber cam because that's the one that's been set up with my edit and the HD settings at 450 um, which is half of full resolution sort of full HD um, but actually it's adequate for this and um, it allows me to uh, render a lot quicker. So also the another thing that I often do is just change the file type. So I'm going to use PNG. PNG just means that I can preview it in the in the um, in the main windows, the the uh, Windows Explorer or the Finder if you're on Apple. Um, and then within the Maya software tab here we've got quality settings so this is low quality anti-aliasing so that's on custom so it's a preview quality if I want to do a higher quality I can do production quality um, and that will give you highest quality anti-aliasing um, and some other features so once I've done the settings um, I just want to check that the image is going to come out okay so I'll do a render this is this tab this one here and I can see that the uh, some of the items are coming out black. Now that's either a problem with the um, actual scene um, in terms of what the uh, uh, how the textures are linked on these items, or it's that there is just isn't enough light in the scene. So I'm going to look through the perspective camera so I can have a, a look at the scene properly. Now I haven't set up any lights in the scene, um, but just to check that that's not the f issue, I will put in a directional light. Sorry, my mouse is playing up there. So add a directional light. A directional light will allow you to fill the scene. A directional light will uh, has no uh, fixed length, so it will actually um, fill the whole scene with light. So I just press render again, and. Now you can see there's a lot more brightness. It's a very flat angle for that light, so I'll just check how that's set up. Um, the directional light here, so there's no rotation on it, so it is coming in directly, and so it's only applying in this plane here. Um, I can find that light within the scene, and if I wish to, I can change that to uh, just rotate it so it's got an angle uh, more like that. So if I zoom in on this, you can see it's actually pointing down and at a slight angle. Now within this window, if I want to save the picture I'm working on, I press keep image um, and then I can re-render that shot. Now because I am zoomed right in and not really seeing the scene, um, I can't really see what's going on. It just came out black. Okay. So now I can see that the color is coming in. It's a little bit washed out. It's a little bit uh, full on those colors. And also I've got the very black areas here. Now I think the black areas are because I haven't got a ground plane in my scene. So I'm going to create a polygon plane uh, and expand that. I just make sure it fits the whole scene. So I can just make that. Really big, so I'm just going to leave it grey for now. Uh, again, I'll keep that image. 
and render that again. So it's coming out very bright. Uh, you might find that the uh, post processing is, is on on that, so you can leave that on or off. In this case, it's going to work as it's off. Um, if I wanted to save that file, I'm going to save image and that will save into my images folder. So I can say zero test. Um, we also had a file type option there as well. So if I just save image file, uh, raw image or color managed. So that bit there where I turned off, that was color managed and I'm saving the, the raw image. Um, so if I do do a save image again, can actually tell it what file type is on PNG, which is great. Um, so I don't need to save that. I should be able to find that in my folders. Uh, I think I'm still working in the week two. Um, but in the images folders here, I have that as a, a single image there. So that's come out well. So you can adjust the, the um, lighting within it. Uh, and that's highly recommended that you do try out different lighting settings. If I go back to this light, I mean, one of the initial things I might do is uh, just reduce the intensity um, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of energy in the scene with that single light. So now that's getting better. So I can see that the transition between each of these shots. Uh, and you can see how that's getting better. So you can add your lights in different ways. If you're very close up, you can start using point lights and um, other lights. So then I can watch this through with the Uber camera. And if I turn lighting on, I make the lighting only show up with the lighting, I can see where that lighting is. So. In actual fact, there will be some dark spots on there. So I can duplicate that directional light and just have a second one with a slightly different angle. Um, so I can probably rotate that uh, so it's got a different angle on it. So that will bring a different light into the scene. Um, and I can check it from the angle that the camera is going to work at. And I can see it is slightly washed out. Um, again, it's got the color correction on for that. Um, but I'm working on 0.5, so I can just, oh, I'm working on the Uber cam there. I want to actually work on perspective. Uh, and if I find that item, focus on it, uh, then I should get a better idea of what the lighting is going to be like within that, within those angles. And it may be too bright now, I may have added too much. Um, and that's rendering the Uber cam still. So if I want to render a different camera, I can do render perspective. So interestingly, at that angle, that is coming out okay. The car here has got something odd going on with the texture. Um, and that may be the type of texture that that has. So if I go onto the actual body of the car, that's got a glass. So the actual car is has a transparency on it. So I may want to solidify that and render that again. So it's all these things that fit together. So we've got the lighting, the uh, rendering settings, and the textures that should all work together. So to look at this in more detail, I'm going to go to the Hypershade. Uh, so the rendering editor's Hypershade. And I'll find that uh, texture that I'm working to there was glass. And if I right click that I can graph network, see the out color, into the surface shader. Uh, I can just see where it's got nodes coming in and going out of. Uh, so I 
should be able to see where that's going. The transparency definitely has a node involved. Um, so that's transparent, that's not. Uh, So that is much more complex than it needs to be. So to fix that, I'm just going to test to see what happens if I give it a Lambert texture. Um, so I'll select the item, right click, assign new material, Lambert. And so that has actually changed it uh, considerably and that will probably render when I click the render button. Yeah, so that is rendering. Um, so it's something to do with the settings on that as I went forward. So that's not something I'm going to fix now um, because I would make a new texture for that vehicle or select different faces and change the glass and I can color that later. Um, but that allows that to show up in the uh, Maya software renderer. So. If that is working in the right way, if I do go to Uber Camera and I just rewind and play through just for a little bit, uh, there we go. Yeah, so we've got the, this kind of shot here where there's more than one item in the, the scene. I want to check that one. So we've got several cars in there. Check how that's looking. That's coming out reasonably well. So if I wanted to make this into a, an image sequence, I would, as I say, I've got the, the settings there. Um, and I'm going to just call this my uh, soft. Um, so I know that this is a different render to the other renders. So now I can go to render, render sequence. And this one's also available within the render view here, render sequence. Um, I can touch render sequence and it will come up with a series of images that I can then use as a final animation. So I'll just let that run through and then we'll look at how we can uh, work with that as an image sequence and bring that into a, an editing package. Now I do notice one other thing that this gray area here, the ground plane that I put in, is too high. So it's hiding the road. So I'm going to hold down escape on the keyboard. Um, and I'm just going to check the height of that plane and just try and drop it slightly. So polyplane in the y dimension, 0.1, uh, minus 0.1 is what I want. So I just want to drop it lower than zero. Let's try minus see where the road comes in. So I'm dropping that down so that the road actually shows up, but I may be able to get a more, uh, I don't want to have a big gap between it. So that clearly is in a better position, so I'll go render, render sequence, and that will start from the beginning again. And now I've got my road texture in there, um, and that's something that will, will work. So I'll leave that for a few minutes. It's taking probably 10 to 15 seconds per frame, um, which is an important consideration when you're working with different render settings. Now eventually you'll have this message come up, sequence rendering completed. So it depends on how many frames you're doing and what quality and what uh, image frame size you're gonna work with. But to compile these, you'll need to use a video editor um, I'm going to use After Effects, it's just uh, my favorite uh, package to do this in. Um, and what I'll do, I'll import the files here as well. So I've got an untitled project. I will find my um, the work that I've been working on, which is in here. I will have saved into this project under Images. Now, I've got some that I rendered earlier. It was uh, my software. 
here it is. So I can find that here, Myasoft 001. Um, it's actually come in as IFF, um, an if sequence. So I thought I'd change it to PNG, but I obviously didn't. Um, and so I'll import that one. Now what we can see here, it's coming at 25 frames a second. We were actually working to 24 frames a second. Um, but sometimes it defaults to 30. Uh, if you've got it at 30, you can change it here, interpret footage, um, type it in there, or you can change that in your preferences as well. So if we go to edit preferences, we can have um, an import preference. Should come up. Uh, has it hidden? Oh, here it is. Uh, sequence footage, how many frames per second you want that to come in. Um, so I've changed that already to 25. So now I can either tell it to make a new composition or I can just drag this into the composition window. And that brings that sequence into this part here. Um, or gives me the whole sequence. And I can zoom out. So that's four seconds, which is about right. So I can see the lighting isn't perfect because I get very black areas on that that high camera but um, I can see my sequence in there in in reasonably good quality now the reason I use After Effects rather than bring it straight into something like Premiere is because then I can apply effects to this as well so I can use uh, a reasonable amount of image control so we've got color correction I can tweak the levels or I could change the saturation in there um, so sometimes uh, color balance might be something I want to work with and so I can take some of the saturation out just to sort of make it slightly grayer um, you can change the brightness and saturation in there as well um, similarly with the image controls um, color correction I've got something called levels which I often do to just make sure the the blacks are slightly higher you can actually just bring that kind of contrast in if you want to have kind of more gritty look. So you can actually just shift where the, the center gray point is as well. So you can actually kind of do quite a lot with this. Um, uh, if you want to, you can add in a, a kind of vignette effect. So if I went to edit duplicate, I can have that same layer over the top. But what I might want to do if I stylize the edges of that, so I'm going to put a Gaussian blur on that one and Gaussian blur does take a reasonable amount of time to, to render so but it actually has quite a good effect um, and then I'm going to take this mask tool the ellipse tool and just draw a mask over the top of that you can see how there it's got this um, it's only showing the top layer now in that area so I've masked that off um, but I also want to do mask feathering, so you can write that, type that in here. Um, I'm going to say 100 by 100. Um, and what I want to do also is to mask invert. So if I inverse the mask, then I can see that that is actually going to have just kind of some blurring on the corners. Um, I can make that slightly bigger. So it kind of blurs off to the edges there. So it's probably a little bit harsh, but um, in terms of the, the amount of blurriness, but it allows me to to work with that in interesting ways. And I can just make that slightly different shape if I want to have more in focus in the middle. So you can also do that with darkening as well. So if I wanted to darken this this shape of the vignette, um, I can do that too. So I kind of keep it as a regular shape. Uh, but because I've got these these levels in here, um, and also I had the hue saturation, I can bring on this one, I can bring the lightness down. So it's kind of just darkened around the edges. So you get that kind of slightly filmic look within that. Um, so then I've got quite a, a stylized render. I mean, all the 3D shots, people do they do post process them they do take images into Photoshop and work with them in that way 
So it's just another way to enhance your work um, and give the finishing touches. And there's a lot of information you can get on that, and you were um, available online. So find your own style. Um, you can add your soundtrack in here, or we can uh, render this composition um, for a render queue. So I've added that to the render queue, which in my case, I just want to change that to the default setting. So the render queue has come up here. Um, I've got the settings set up for that. Um, I'm using QuickTime ProRes so that it holds the quality. You can choose in here. So I've gone on to QuickTime, Apple ProRes 422. Um, this is what I'd normally use on a Mac, but it should work here as well. Sometimes it uh, won't play back on the PC, but that's um, a lot of my edits happen on the Mac, so I will work on that. And that will have saved out a file. Um, I didn't check where it was saving it. Um, so if I do another render queue, if I click on this here, it will show me where I've saved it. So 2019 renders, um, or you could set that to where you want that to be, which is probably more useful for me to be in the folder I was working to. So uh, I'm actually going to save that into this week here. Uh, and then I'll just render that again. And finally, I'll save my project. Uh, again, that can go into week three that I'm working on. And give it a name. And that should have set up my final shot within that. So when I go back to my folders here, I'll have the video that will probably play if I open it with VLC or QuickTime Player but it might not have the codex fully installed on this. Um, so I'll give it a try. No. Um, but my workflow would usually be to take that into um, another edit suite to make that work. Um, I normally use a Mac, that's why I use ProRes. If you want to do a uh, something that will play just out of the system, um, I would normally suggest uh, probably sticking with AVI and just then post compressing it. So here we've got no compression. So if I do an AVI one with no compression, custom AVI, I can render that one. That will play back, it'll be a very large file. Um, but I would generally then put either of those files into Media Encoder and make an MP4 video. So I'll just run you through that as well. So the MyaSoft one, which is the AVI, that will play here. I can see how that comes out. Um, but the size of that will be, yeah, so that's the difference. That's a, a Compressed using the QuickTime compression, um, but very good quality, 28 uh, megabytes and 182 for the uncompressed AVI. Now to make that into an MP4, I can just drop that into my, my scene here. Um, and I'm using the H.264 codec. Um, I've got that set up for Ultra um, 4K, but I don't need that. So I'll go into the settings here um, I'm not going to use the preset. I'm going to look at the video and I'm going to say match source. That will match the size of my, my source and uh, the audio is included in that. But I don't think I have audio with this anyway. Um, so let's change that one. Uh, there are some presets that you might use. If you're working uh, match source, high bit rate is normally a good option for most of these. And then you just press play. And that should go through the frames and turn those into MP4s for you. So that even worked with the one that I couldn't play back. Um, so they both play through now. 
and that will be a size. So that's five meg. This one six meg. So that's the process of getting that into a a normal uh, playable file. So you can also, if you're working with the uncompressed ones, uh, you can bring those into an edit suite like Premiere or um, Final Cut and you can add your soundtrack to that afterwards. Okay, so once we've worked with Maya software, we might like to try the Arnold Renderer. So if I do go onto Arnold Renderer um, and try and render a shot, see that actually it's coming out a lot darker. So we do need to have very different render settings. Um, the render settings for the Arnold renderer really do represent more um, the um, real uh, real levels of light that you might be working with. Um, but there is a shortcut to working with this. So I'm just going to take out these lights and keep the plane in there. So just delete them for now. Um, and we'll see that actually that probably comes out completely black now. We can see how that comes across. Okay, so the way I would work with this, I'm going to press escape to stop that rendering. If we go to the Arnold menu here, we go to lights and we can add a sky dome. Now, sky dome is great because you can add HDRI images to that. Um, so now if I render, uh, you can see those elements coming in. It's fairly similar. Um, there's a little bit of grain on there that we can check with the render settings. But these background images aren't showing up on the actual textures of the buildings and those sort of things. So this is something I'm going to have to adjust. And it may be that that's all to do with the uh, render settings again. So I would go into um, my channel box so that I can see uh, the layer city was as a reference. So I'm going to turn that one off so I can actually select items in there. Um, I'm also going to make sure I'm on my perspective camera so I'm not going to mess the scene up. Um, but I just want to check what the type of uh, type is with that. So it's a fong. The fong isn't showing up particularly well. So what we can do is we can cha just change the type of that um, and we can just pick a different one. I mean the AI ones, AI standard would be one that would be perfect but it would, the color has gone now within that. So that's not a good way of doing this. We may be able to uh, if I undo that Building five, it's a fong. If I change that to Lambert, it will keep that in there. So that may be something that, um, if that's the right one at the right angle, that may show up. Otherwise, we'll have to reset all of these items to be the right type. So I can see on the ground, it's slightly reflective here. So using the Arnold render, we are getting reflections. So you can get very nice. Uh, looks on on the vehicles if you make that reflective but um, I think uh, what I will need to do is to go into the rendering editor so this is stuff that I haven't actually modeled myself but I can go through this and I can see that uh, where each of these are um, if I close that down slightly so I can see that that's Fong uh, yeah they are all that's a Lambert cars. So the cars came in differently to the buildings. Um, but again, I can see that they're, they are Fong. So I can uh, select a few of these at once. Um, they are all Fong there. Um, and I should be able to just change that to Lambert. Um, so if I do have a large area that I'm working with at the same time, um, I 
I might just highlight all of them and select those and tell them all to be Lambert. So I can see that they are all changed. Nope, <laughs> they haven't changed all of them. Some of these have. So it is going to be a matter of going through individually to change these uh, so that they work. Um, slightly time consuming, but it's going to do two things. One is it's going to take the reflectedness off, which is something that just wasn't looking right. And uh, like I say, the relationship between all the render settings is, is really key to getting this to work. So I've just gone through the process of turning all the background images to Lambert. Um, and I can see this coming up now. And I'm not getting the reflective ground. Um, and this is going to give me this uh, more intense look. So this takes slightly, um, slightly longer to render than the, the Maya software, which is why um, I want to show you the Maya software first. But this does allow you to add in things like reflections. And if you are working with Arnold, you can add in the, the sky domes and uh, HDRI images for that as well. So you can see a slight grain on this. So you'll see also that this took 13 seconds to render. If I go back to the render settings, which I can get from here or back on the top up here, I can look at the um, under render settings and I can potentially bring up um, adaptive sampling. Now if I en enable this and then render that image, I should be able to see the difference in the render should be able to see a, a much higher quality and the adaptive sampling will actually take more samples of a certain area if it needs it. So now it's rendering I'm getting a very much cleaner look on there um, but you can tell possibly that this is running a lot slower so that my previous render would have taken me 13 seconds to do this could take up to a minute um, quite easily because it's doing more calculations per frame um, and more more bounces to to get that um, cleaner definition of the elements in there. So some of these workflows are, are really just because we're working with certain images, um, or certain materials and things that we've, we've downloaded as a set. So we're we're adapting to to what we're doing, so we've changed everything to Lambert so that it'll work that way. And it may be if you were setting this scene up yourself, you would be able to use um, the actual Arnold render standard surface, which would um, give you different effects within that within that material. So I'll just let this finish rendering, um, and then we'll be able to compare that to the previous frame, and we'll also be able to compare the time. So you will have to uh, bear in mind how much it takes per frame and do the calculation for 120 frames. So obviously, if this is going to take a minute, that took a minute 40 to do with that adaptive set sampling settings, we could lower that as well if we need to. So it's worth taking time to think, do I actually need that quality of render settings? But if I go back to view the other one, you can see that grain on there that we've managed to remove by uh, using the adaptive sampling, which is a lot cleaner image. Um, so it actually may be that I just need five in there. And if I render that again, that will probably take, this will take a minute. The last one took one, 140. Um, and we can see if it's actually got the same amount of noise or less. So, um, already see a tiny bit of noise on there um, but if I split the difference there and maybe had six as the ma maximum camera entity alias then that would be suitable but you can see already that this is rendering at um, considerably faster speeds so getting that number right is the key to really getting reasonable quality renders um, and getting the right speed for that as well. So that was 40 seconds.
41 seconds to make that image. Um, so if I'm happy with those render settings, then I can go into the, the render tabs here. Um, and I'm just going to change the name that I'm rendering. And then I can render that sequence as well. So it's exactly the same process as I've just gone through. Um, I will save this before I set it off. So save scene as um, Arnold. And then if I want to make this sequence, I can go here and say render sequence. And that will save each frame as an image sequence for me. Again, that's going to take a lot longer than the, the Maya software, but I will be able to get a better quality. I'll be able to use the HDR images on the, the Sky Dome and maybe able to get better effects for what, what I'm working on. But in this case, just working within this um, urban setting, I'm not seeing the horizon, so I'm not using the HDRI within that. So in a while, probably about an hour and a half, that render will be done and I can put it through the same process in After Effects as I did the other images. So once your render is finished, again, we can import. I right click there, File, Import. You can also do File, Import up here. So File, Import, File. And so this is my new file here. Again, it's a PNG sequence and I can import that into my sequence here. Now I'm going to do something slightly different because I've set up this look for my render. I want to be able to keep that in my next uh, my next work. So I'm going to duplicate that and then I can go to composition settings. And I'm just going to change the name of that to Arnold and then double click that to open it. Now the easiest way to swap these clips over is to highlight the clips you want to swap and then drag this holding down the alt key and then let go and it swaps them over so this gives me the new video here um, with my three shots lined up although it's got one that is slightly not working I'll just save that now I think maybe one of the frames no, seems fine. So it's got the it's got those all lined up, and I can see the difference between these two renders. And the main thing is this car looks a lot better in the Arnold render. It's got a kind of a lot of ambient occlusion, and there's a lot there's a lot more to it. Basically, the uh, if I use the same frame, so I'm going to go onto one second there, and. Nope, we're on two seconds. Let's go to two seconds on both. Uh, we can see that's kind of got flat, flat colours on those, um, but it's got a lot of a nice, nicer feel. It's got the shadows under it. Um, there's a lot more to the Arnold renderer, just with the very base settings that we're working with. So, if you have the time, um, that has taken probably two hours to get four seconds of video so um, it is a consideration and if you don't need it if you're doing a tune look or something like that you'll find these flat colors work um, very well so do play with the render settings when you're setting this up um, and make sure you get the best that you can